Good morning and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. We praise him because he's God. He's the almighty God. He's the one who gave us life, who gave us his son, his very word, his living word. And he is the savior of this body. And we thank him because of what he has done for us and what he is currently doing in us. In this day and in this hour, we just praise him all over again, all the more, because he is God. Amen. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Enlighten our minds with your word today. Show us your way of doing things through your truth, Lord God, and by your Holy Spirit. Cause us, Lord God, in the thoughts of our mind to walk by your ways, to talk by your ways, to live this life out today your way. We pray your will be done in us as it is in heaven. Father God, we are called according to your ways and your word. In Jesus' name, thank you again. Amen. We're going to be reading from Psalm 119, 119, starting at verse 129, and we'll be reading through 136. So it starts, Thy testimonies are wonderful, therefore doth my soul keep them. The entrance of your word gives light, it gives understanding unto the simple. I opened my mouth and, and I panted. For I long for your commandments. Look thou upon me and be merciful unto me as you used to do unto those that love thy name. Order my steps in your word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from, from the oppression of man. So will I keep your precepts. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach me your statutes, Lord, your ways, Father God. Rivers of waters run down my eyes, because they keep not your law. Well, in, in the name of Jesus Christ, that was Psalm 119, 100, verse 129 through 136. Again, we give praise to God for his word. We thank him because he is God. He is our light and our salvation, the strength of our lives. And and let's just go down right where we left off on, on 136. It says, rivers of waters run down mine eyes because they keep not thy law. Well, you know, in the course of a day, there are many situations and circumstances that we're going to come, that are going to come into our lives. Many of the same circumstances happen to us in daily, you know. We're always coming into the same thing every single day and facing the same situations over and over again, like a never-ending story. But in the midst of this, you know, we serve a God who is always going forward. Things are supposed to be the same, yet things do change. If you find yourself in the type of situation where you're around a lot of unbelievers and you have to maintain, you know, your your love for God, your desire for him and his ways. The Bible tells us that, you know, bad company corrupts good morals in Proverbs. It says bad company corrupts good morals. Well, in this psalm, it says that the entrance of his word brings light. It tells us, the word tells us that he is coming to deliver me. We're asking for him to deliver us from the oppression of the situation and the circumstances that are around us. Situations and circumstances aren't just broken things, but they are the people around you that cause things to come to be by their unbelief, by the, what they believe. Matthew 
Men ought always to pray is one of the things I remember. And there's another part in the Bible where it tells us to fret not evildoers. That's in Psalm 37. And then there's another one that tells us to pray at all times with all prayer and supplication. Make our requests known before God. He is the God of peace. If we keep our mind on him, calling out on his name, seeking him, see, seeking him while he may be found is in the midst. It, it may be in the midst of the situation that you're in today. You know, you, you're going to have to call out on his name, even in, in the quietness of your heart, saying, Father, you see this situation every single day. You know the thoughts and desires of my heart are towards you. My feelings are going to rise up on me and, and to stare at the situation. And it's going to, the situation or circumstance is going, to, is going to want to talk louder than the voice, that still quiet voice inside of you. But God is your keeper. He is the preserver of all life. And we have to be still before him. Still before him in the midst of a gigantic situation because they always seem gigantic to us. But God is greater than everything, all the situations and circumstances of this life. The entrance of his word brings light and it gives understanding. We heard this in Psalm 119 that the, what was it, the testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'll put it my way, the testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ is pure. I'm turning there right now. Psalm, Psalm 19. You love it when all your pages want to stick together? Psalm 19, in verse 7, it says, the testimony of the Lord is sure, which means it's true, making wise is simple. Do you have faith in God today? It makes wise the simple. It gives us understanding. The entrance of God's word into our hearts, into the thoughts, into our thoughts, renewing our hearts and minds in him brings light. But our desire has to be constantly for him. Yeah, we feel the situation, but we walk by faith and not by sight. By every word that proceeds from the mouth of God is what we live off of. That is our daily bread, our strength today. Praise the Lord. The testimonies, your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore does my soul keep them. In, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the world, all there that there is in it. In the beginning, God created all things. He didn't stop being great. No one else that you've known of created what we see. No one else created all the, the, the nervous system inside this body, the fish that are in the ocean. And men can come up with every logical thing they can think of to try to sum up why and how life is. But you've got to see beyond the, the imaginations of men. The imaginations are, of men are vain and they stand in their own strength. But God's strength is a strength that can say one word and it come to be. God says that he watches over his word to perform it. He'll do it. Where God sends his word, it does what he says. It does. His word does not return to him void, but it does. It accomplishes what he tells it to. Is it accomplishing those things in you today? Hebrews chapter 11 says, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen 
were not made by things which do appear. See, we believe God, and we believe what he said. We can visibly see what he said. We can visibly see what God said. In Psalm 19, again, it says in verse 1, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night shows knowledge. There's no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. God has shown himself. Everyone has to stand up, look, and be in awe of what he's made. There's no way, you know, no way that, that man made it. You know, it's, it's just enough of, of logical explanations, men using their own head to try to explain away why we are. And to be able to, to just remain in their sinful nature, that is their choice to deny God. But he is visible in everything that he's, he's created. He is visible. He says in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do you understand that the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take the kingdom of God by force? That the situations and circumstances of this day, you feel them and you see them. You use all your five senses to understand that they're there. But God is above, beyond all of these things. He is greater than the situations and the circumstances, the men and the women, the children of the earth. Praise God. Rivers of waters run down mine eyes because they keep not your law. Deliver me from the oppression of men, so will I keep your precepts. Order my steps in your word, and let not any iniquity, not let, don't let any iniquity, have dominion over me. Psalm 19 again says, uh, and that was from 119. Now Psalm 19 says again, it, starting in verse 11, 10, let's start in verse 10. It says, more to be desired are they than gold. More to be desired, your word. This is how, this is how I say it back to God. Your word is more to be desired than gold, much more than much fine gold, sweeter than the honey. Your word is sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb. Your word, by your word is your servant warned. In keeping of your word, there is great reward. Oh, I can't understand, Lord God, my errors. Cleanse me by your word from secret faults, Father God. Keep me back, Lord God, from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Let your word be my government. Doesn't it say that in Isaiah? Isaiah chapter 6, I believe it is. Or was it 9? No, it's Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9. Let's see, verse... Oh, yeah, when it talks about Jesus in verse chapter chapter 9, verse starting in verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, and, unto, and, and a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government there, and peace. There shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon the kingdom to order and establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth and forevermore the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this is not by might nor by power but by his spirit we ingest this word the entrance of his word brings light it's by faith that we come to him It's by faith that we trust in him that we call out on his name knowing that he will answer our prayers because we love him he can see straight through us he hears every word every thought every idea before it ever comes out of your mouth 
before you ever act on it. Even if it doesn't come out of your mouth and you just act on it, God sees everything that's going on with you. We are bare and naked before him. His word washes and purges us. And we're reminded of who he is by his Holy Spirit. We trust completely in him for every situation and circumstance in life. Before the situations and circumstances in life can even ever come, we are pouring out our heart before him. Because we love him, we're praising him every day. He is the preserver of all life. Elohim. Creator and preserver of all life. He keeps everything by his word. Listen to this. For the word, and, and this is a Hebrews chapter 4, starting in verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes with whom we have to do. Now, I find that awesome, that we can trust in God who called us to be. We, If you really look at the scripture, he is calling us to enter into his rest. And the only way to enter into his rest is by faith, by trusting him in the midst of the situation and circumstance. While it is said today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation, like in the day of trouble. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit, all that came out of Egypt did not come out of Egypt by Moses. We walk by faith and not by flesh. We war in the, in the spirit, not after the flesh. All who come to God must be still and just know in their inner man that he is God and trust him. Don't let your body have the response of the world and don't let the world pull the response out of you. Listen for his word and trust him while he is near. Look at Jesus Christ in chapter 15 of uh, in, in ver chapter 4 verse 15 it says for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was with all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. We don't have to cuss somebody out. We don't have to get an attitude and shut down. We don't have to cry, go home, murmur, grumble, and complain. But Jesus said, my peace I leave you, my peace I've given to you, I give to you. He's giving us something that we, we, we have to just trust. We have to ask for in trust and faith that we're receiving. We have to reach with it with our inner man, our heart. So that we can speak those things that be not as though they are. So that we can speak like Jesus spoke. Yet he was tempted, yet without sin. And we can do the th same thing. It, you know, the, the, what's amazing to me is how... You can, how we can get an attitude about the situation and the circumstances and say, well, I'm not Jesus. But if Christ be in you, he is the hope of glory. Look, if he did this in a flesh and blood body without sin, we can do it too. Jesus Christ gave his life. He, he didn't just go come here and give a quick brief message and go on the cross and die and get ro ri raised again. But he walked through this life for 33, 33 years in this flesh and blood body and felt what we felt. And yet he did not sin. But he came out of his mouth, came the word of God because he was birthed by the word of God. The word of God was encased in flesh. This is the Son of God we're talking about, who gave himself. He walked through his life and bore a witness of the, in, in the flesh. Let us therefore boldly 
come boldly unto the throne of grace where we may find mercy, obtain mercy, and find grace to help in a time of need. Now, I, I think that that is the main point. To come boldly before God in the midst of a situation or the circumstance and to continually come before Him. Because He's given us the grace. He's given us mercy through His, His resurrection. Through His life, death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus Christ has given us the strength. The, let's say it like this in the right order. The authority and the strength to be able to do and to live and to be what he's done. And even to be, as, we, as we're walking through the valley, the shadow of death, to trust him. And just walk, just go, just do this thing. Because God is. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Ah, oh, mighty God. Again. His testimonies are wonderful. Therefore does my soul, my soul keeps them. I desire to keep them. It's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God that I keep them. You could go to Romans chapter 7, verse, I believe, verse 25 or 27, through Romans chapter 8. Read the whole thing. And you'll see how to walk by the Spirit. How to walk by the Spirit so that you would not fulfill the lust of the flesh. How to be still and listen for that still small voice of the Holy Spirit so that we can enter into the rest, so that we can speak those things that be not as though they are. He is speaking to us. Are we listening so that we can speak to the mountain that is standing before us? The entrance of his word brings light. It gives understanding unto the simple. I opened my mouth and panted. I long for your words, God. Is your desire so much for him today? Do you desire the word of truth? Do you, do you hunger? Do you thirst for it? Pant for who he is. I want to drink him. I want to eat him. In my, I want him in my ears, in my hands, on my tongue. I want him in my feet. Feet shod. Prepared with the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Strengthened and, and standing, therefore, with my loins girt in his truth. I want to feel the breastplate of righteousness. Not just know of the breastplate of righteousness. But I pray that the righteousness of God be my breastplate. And that the helmet of salvation would so be on my head that when I, you know how it says in James, I, I forget what, chap, what, what Bible verse it is, but it says that a man would look in the mirror and when he walked away he would forget what he looked like. Well, when I look in the mirror, I see me, but when I walk away, what? do I see? As I'm sitting here reading this book, I know who I am when I'm speaking to you. But as I get up to take care of the daily, to attend to the daily chores of the day, do I forget who I am? My salvation is 24 hours a day. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Lord, help me to remember who I am in you. As I walk through this world, through the situations and the circumstances of this life, let them not dictate to me more than I remember your word, because your word is powerful. You are great. You created the world and all that there is in it, and there isn't anything more than you. This earth will, will be, you know, destroyed in a little while. I want to say destroyed. But God said that he would make a new heaven, a new earth. There's going to be a new thing going on. So, But in the meanwhile, this place where sin is abound and darkness and death and destruction just have their way. We're here walking through this. Wishing that it would go away. 
waiting for our own for ourselves to wake up in the midst of a perverse generation hiding and cowering and not doing what we should being the shining lights that god has called us to be the ministers that we are to be letters living letters epistles before god doing all that we can everywhere that we are let me remind you that god is faithful he said that he watches over his word to perform it. He that began a great work and you will complete it unto the day of Jesus Christ. He will complete it. So I encourage you that in the midst of the situations and circumstances that you find yourself in today, whether you have money, don't have money, are lonely, feel rejected, loss of life, God is and he is faithful. Our joy is in him. He is our exceeding joy. And if you can find yourself lost in him, that's the best thing that you could ever do. Open your word today and get your face in the word of God. Let him be the government and the king that he is. He created us before the foundation of the world. We were a thought in his mind. He had us in mind. He had your name in mind. He had my name in mind. And he called us according to his purpose. And he wants to wash us and cleanse us with his word and by his spirit. Romans, I believe that's, no, John chapter 3, to enter into the kingdom of God. Chapter 3 and 3. No, chapter 3, verse 3, and chapter 3, verse 5. Read and understand his way of doing things. This word brings light. This word brings life. This word of God does everything. I'm telling you, God is real, and he loves us. He cares for us so much that he gave his son. He took time. He took time to make that body. He, he, he overpowered her, uh, Mary, and, and put his word in her womb, and that womb encased flesh around that baby, and that baby became a man. A sacrifice for us. Only God's word is powerful enough to change every situation and circumstance. Do we have faith today? This is Get the Word in Your Face International with Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I'm thanking you for your listening ears today. May God bless you with the opening of your understanding. I will leave you with verse 130 from um, Psalm 119. The entrance of thy words give light. It gives understanding unto the simple. And we are simple. We are simple. Cast away all pride and understand that he's greater than all of us. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding today. Again, this is Get the Word in Your Face with Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I love you and have a great day.